Welcome to another episode of Silence is Golden. I'm Simon Kelly. And he's Richard Overall. <laughs> Today, what we're going to be talking about is winning proposals with the anti follow up sequence. We'll also be talking about uh, WordCamp Europe, talk about a new plugin that won the plugin Appalooza at uh, Orange uh, County's 2018 uh, plugin Appalooza, and uh, ways to improve your website content. Stay with us. <laughs> Good morning, sir. How good you doing? afternoon. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Good, good, good. So, who were you introing just then? My mate Richard Overall's in the in the wings, watching on. Yep. Making notes. I'm sure we'll have notes after the show. You oh, know, really? You work on a play and you have a rehearsal, and the directors there and they make notes, and then nope. afterwards you feel like you've done a great performance, and the director says, "I've got some notes." No. Nope. And he basically tears strips off you and tells oh. you how shit you are. Oh, that we get to look forward, look forward to after this. That's what we look forward to next year. Cool. Ro's making notes. Is that um, that four-hour appointment I see in the calendar? That's right. Brutal. One of the notes that I would like to uh, make for this episode is that we may sound a little different because we have new microphones. Mm. We have new microphones. They look the same, but they're different. Same, same, but different. Uh, these are the Sennheiser ME4s for you nerds watching who want to know. We were using the Sennheiser ME2s, which are omnidirectional, which means they pick up the room and they pick up each other. These are cardioid... Uh, polar pattern ME4s, geeking right out now, mm. um, which means they basically pick up here, uh, not kind of here. So we should sound better in theory, but we'd love you to tell us whether or not we sound better. Uh, leave us a comment under the video and tell us how we sound because we are continually trying to improve what we're doing. Mm. Big plans. This is a small tweak That's right. in the, the drop of the ocean that is the future of this show. Correct. Do you like that? Yep. Like it a lot. Let's, did, you, uh, did you rehearse that? No. Take much to put no, that no, on. No, 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 no. Just off the top of the dome. Wow. Off the let's, top um, of the dome. <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a look at what happened in the world of WordPress in the last week. Stop, Stop that happened. happened. Uh, you've got a got a thumbs up there. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What? But oh. he was just saying that's gold. It's like stuff that happened. Oh. <laughs> like, oh. So <laughs> what happened? Genius, WordCamp Europe yeah. um, was on. And uh, Matt Mullenweg did the, the keynote. Uh, there, I, I'm curious to know, did you go to WordCamp Europe? What were some of the key takeaways? Let us know in the comments. Um, there was also live stream. Did you check out the live stream? I didn't actually have a chance myself. Um, in, on WP Tavern, uh, con there was record numbers at Contributor Day. They had a few photos and there was a, a packed room, which was amazing. It's really good to see. And the Wi-Fi went out, <laughs> <laughs> which is hilarious. Uh, but it was great to see so many people contributing to WordPress. Like, that's, that's awesome. That sounds like an episode of Silence is Golden. <laughs> <laughs> Without internet, we, the show must go on, though, right? Contributing must go on. Sean Dolmer on Facebook says that it sounds fantastic, apparently. Oh, awesome. Colleen Gratzer says, Troy, right? What the hell? Sounds like a robot in the background. Is that a good thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? There is a, there is a, a robot in the background. Oh, right. There's a buzz in the background. Yeah, we do. We have a frequency problem yeah. here in Silence is Golden. Uh, not that we're infrequent, but we have an actual frequency problem. I like uh, which it. <laughs> sounds like there's a buzzing robot in the background. Just a little... Yeah. Work in progress. We'll fix if it. If we just continue to talk, we should <clears throat> drown out the robots. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Keep going. It's kind of been my modus operandi since I was six years old, <laughs> really. Yeah, yeah. Drown out the robots. Now you've got a reason. Talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. Finally, you've got a Finally reason. Finally got a reason. So a <laughs> plugin called Plugin Detective won WordCamp Orange's Orange County's 2018 Plugin Appalooza. And um, what it does is it, uh, if there's something wrong with your WordPress install, it'll help you uh, investigate which plugin is at fault. And it kind of makes it like right. it's got a really nice UI about it. And the, the little video walkthrough on the plugin page is actually pretty cool. It's pretty over the top for what it needs to do, which is like it um, just disables certain plugins mm -hmm. and it helps you decide which one's right. <laughs> Instead of you just going disable all, one check, one check, it'll I'm not sure what kind of algorithm it uses, but it will say, like, what about these nine? Does that work? Is your problem still there? OK, what about these seven? And then check it, and then you'll get down to the one, and it'll find out what the problem was. And it's actually quite nice. Like, it's really good. What if the problem plugin is plugin detective? Like, does it analyze itself? That, I have no idea. Right. Yeah, it's it's a, very it seems odd that you would install a plugin to work out which plugin's not working. Mm. Properly, yeah, yeah. Rather than just go and disable all the plugins one at a well, time it and helps you, re enable them. It helps you detect it faster. Right. It solves that problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, it even works if the plugin has broken um, the WordPress admin install. I think oh. if you upload it by 
okay. FTP, it'll still work apparently. But yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a, like quite a different looking plugin. Um, yeah, like quite like the, the UI, the way it goes about doing it. Really interesting. So, Excellent. Uh, Pete Perry on Facebook says, watching from a bar, is that okay? Well, Pete, I'm sure it's okay. I'm sure it'll be more interesting if you're watching this from a bar. Mm. Um, the more you drink, the funnier we get. <laughs> uh, looking forward to seeing you in a couple of days, actually. Flying yeah. out to Los Angeles, of course, on our way to San Diego for our mastermind. We're having a meetup on Thursday night in West Hollywood, and Pete Perry is going to be there. Oh, he's really? Yeah, he's going to so come a couple along. of days. That blows That's my right. mind that we're flying out tomorrow it's morning. Yep. There you go. Crazy. I hope you're still in the bar, Pete. We'll come and join you. <laughs> That's it. We'll come pick you up. Let us know where you are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, an article by web, design, web designer Depot was four ways to improve your website content. Um, I thought this Only was four. really interesting. Well, people can't handle the reality of how many ways you can do it. Mm. Um, I thought this article was really interesting because it kept it at four and it kept it quite simple. And it really focused on that... Uh, when you're building websites, it's really important the words that are used on the page. Like it's, really? Yeah, what? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's not Stop just, it. It's not just code and colors. Get out of town. So a big takeaway for me here is that if you're not partnering with someone, if you're building websites for clients and you're not partnering with someone or you're not learning more about creating effective copy on your website, then potentially you might be working yourself out of a job. So you need to be paying attention to these things. And this article does a good um, intro about um, what you should be doing. One, design doesn't sell. Two, you need to plan ahead, like plan your content, plan what the user experience needs to be and what messages um, are important for this particular website. Um, editing is just as important as writing. So mm. you don't, it's not just like, here's the website done and we'll never change that ever. Mm. It's like, well, you need to actually... Uh, write drunk, edit sober. Who said that? Who Hemingway. Said, Hemingway. Write mm. drunk, edit sober. Yeah. I like to write drunk and edit drunk and publish drunk. <laughs> yeah. Just be drunk. Yeah, yeah. Are you doing that as well, Pete? <laughs> like, yeah. you and Pete are getting along. Yeah, we're going to get, get along, along just fine. <laughs> yeah. The last time Pete and I hung out in a bar and sang karaoke, he snapped his Achilles tendon. <laughs> Can't wait it's to see story. what happens in the next, to cut him off the the next hospital, seven days. Not before really? I sang another Doobie Brothers song. Mm. He just was about ready to be carted off in the... Just wait, wait there. Uber to hospital. <laughs> Dude, just wait. I've got the Doobie Brothers queued up. Yeah, I've yeah. got to see... It's you don't want to miss this. Trust me. I feel really bad about that, man. I've got to apologise to him when I see him in a couple of days. Yeah, right. It's a true story. Me this way is drinking. Mm. Yeah, well, well done. Right. Yeah, it's not my fault. Yeah, well, apparently it is. You what know, do you think about that, Pete? Is it Troy's fault? Do you know Let what us a, know in the comments. Do you know what a listicle is? Yeah, yeah. It's, What's a listicle? It's when you're really cold outside and you... No, no, that's an icicle, you idiot. A listicle is where you have a blog post which is like a list of things. So, for example, 17 favourite plugins at WordCamp Europe. That's a listicle. I reckon we should write an article in our blog called The 17 Ways to Write a Listicle. Ooh, oh. 17 ideas for a listicle article. Listicle, listicle. inception. There we yeah, go. Yeah. Very meta, isn't it? Sounds good. How did that come from drinking Achilles? Anyway. Well, because we're doing the four <laughs> ways to improve your site's ah, content. Gotcha. I mean, there's more than four mm. ways to well, improve you, your Well, you you know, where content. do I... Well, you produce the rest of them then, will you? I, you won't. These clickbaity <laughs> articles, they just shit me to tears, really. Because you didn't think of them. That's what you're that's upset right. about, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> and the last one, if we could please get to number oh, four, sorry. regularly generate ideas for blog content. Oh. And, it, you know, if you're building really? websites for clients, if you help clients do this, it can really help them grow their business and position you as a um, more effective, highly paid consultant. Mm. Uh, my mate Ed Dale once said to me, there's one way to make sure your clients have got good content on their websites and that's to do it for them because mm. they don't have the skills or the patience to do it and they don't understand it and they don't value it and they're probably not very good at it. So you should just do it for them and charge them accordingly. That's a nice list there, one way. There you go, mm. just do it for I them like and that. charge them accordingly. Length of the list. I also have one more thing that uh, is not exactly news, but there's a, a website that I've come across, an app I've come across called Muzzle. And what it does, it's a simple Mac app to silence embarrassing notifications while screen sharing. Oh. Macs do not show my screen because oh. this isn't particularly safe for work, oh. but just look at Troy's face and just have a, have a mm. read of these. Oh, that's very funny. <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> Yes, yeah, a billing issue for one of our favourite websites <laughs> that is similar to YouTube. Yes, it says... Uh, and might rhyme with horn. <laughs> uh, so a little... Notification. A notification a comes issue. in while you're screen sharing. You know, we're on Silence is Golden and screen sharing and I'm, I'm teaching people and then comes up uh, eBay auction alert. Your bid on Life Size Blob doll has ended. <laughs> mm. Your pink tube <laughs> subscription is about to expire. <laughs> Hilarious. It's, a, it's actually a good app and it's Therapy just great. appointment in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Alexander says genital warts aren't covered. HR says oh. genital warts aren't covered from Slack. Not safe for <laughs> Absolutely work. Absolutely gold. Not safe for work. Check it out though. So we'll Lots uh, of MILF. <laughs>
<laughs> mum says, what's a MILF? Notification from mum. Mum says, what's a MILF, girl? So that's what yeah. <laughs> that's what's happened this week. Well, MILF is a mum I'd like to friend, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mum I'd like to friend. Yeah, that's yeah. what a MILF is, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Muzzle is a great app. Milk is lactose free, I think, is the... <laughs> MILF is lactose free. <laughs> milk is lactose free. Oh, milk is lactose free. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. See what happens when you have a special guest come in and sit in the audience. Just the show just goes to a whole new level, doesn't it? A whole new just level. Just when Pete said he was drinking, it really helped me get into the, into the, what is it, the role. Into the role. So muzzle Ooh. is a great way to hide those notifications when you're screen sharing. Exactly. There we go. Yep. So as always, <coughs> going through these articles and putting together the show this week, a couple of things were annoying me. So let's take a look at what pisses me off. This pisses me off. So what really gives me the shits is people comparing themselves to others, like thinking, and I, I do this, I piss me off all the time. But um, when I was putting together my care plans for the first time a couple of years ago, I was looking at what WP Curve were doing and mm. how they were pricing themselves. Mm. And I pretty much almost priced myself out of having Existence. an income. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. How, like how were they, and um, when offering hosting, to clients, mm. like wow, they're do, like companies like Bluehost are doing this for $4 a month, mm. I'm gonna do it at three fifty. is that mm. how I'm gonna stay competitive? Mm. Comparing yourself to others is not the way to do it. It just makes you feel like shit, basically. If you're looking at what everyone else is doing, if you're looking at how they're putting together their marketing, how they're growing their business, it's not real. The marketing that's out there is just their best self being portrayed out on the internet. It's not the actual reality and it doesn't help you get where you need to go. Do you have any, Apart from you wanna me, add to that? Apart from me, everything I share is actually my authentic life. Of it's course. Full of rainbows and unicorns. Exactly 100% no, true at no all times. No problems here whatsoever. Mm. I think one of the things when we are, um, when we're, pr especially with pricing, is when we're trying to price ourselves against businesses that have economies of scale. Mm -hmm. Like you can't, I can't build a website for $399. Sites and stores can do it because they might have, you know, a team of 100 developers in the Philippines all working away doing that. And at scale, they can afford to do that. But we can't afford to do that at our scale. Mm. Um, Potentially they can't. That's another thing. Like sites and stores still exist, which is good. But is you'll see people's, I don't know, is maybe. Is um, it a good thing that they still <laughs> exist? They still do exist, but is that for a good them, thing that For them it's good. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, sure. I'm good ambivalent about it. Yeah. Um, um, but it, like the, you don't know if that will actually exist for long, mm. right? So if someone's got this pricing that's come out and, you know, the, the quote that always rings true to me is like, there's always someone willing to go broke faster yeah, than you. Yeah, 100%. So someone's like, yeah. website's for 100, and you go, oh my God, I can't do it for 100 bucks. Mm. That's right, neither can they, they're gone. So when, when I used to be a, here's a, open the closet and watch the skeleton fall out. When I used to be a hairdressing sales representative, driving around the country selling shampoo and so hair smooth. products. <laughs> to hair salons, you know. Hi, wanna buy some shampoo? Um, that was my job for a bit. One of the things that, um, uh, one of the in-jokes was that if you set up a, a hair salon with $10 haircuts on the window, uh, if, if you've got a salon and someone sets up a salon across the road from you and says $10 haircuts on the window, then the sign you should put up is, we fix $10 haircuts. <laughs> you know. Love it. <clears throat> Uh, but of course they don't, they, they go $10 haircuts and they go, we're $9 haircuts, yeah, we're $8 yeah. haircuts, we're $7 yeah. haircuts. Yeah. Hey, come and we'll cut your hair and we'll, we'll pay you 50 bucks for yeah. us to cut your hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Building for lease. But also, I know what you, you yeah, that's right, exactly. <laughs> I also know what you mean, like you shouldn't compare where you are today to where someone is in five years time that's from right. you. One of the great examples of this is Marie Folio. A lot of people kind of get blinded by how wonderful her stuff is these days. And her stuff is amazing. The mm. production values are incredible. Um, she's got a team. She's got a you know $20 million a year plus business. So she's got resources and a team to do this. But when she started out, she started out making videos looking into the little camera on her laptop. So you'd be just looking straight up her nose, a bit like Gretel Colleen on Big Brother. <laughs> um, you'd be looking straight up her nose and she'd be sort of teaching you what she learned. She was basically just learning out loud. And of course well. that has evolved and developed into B-School, which is now a thing, and she's got full-time videographers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, Same with Gary V. People yeah, are like, yeah. oh, Gary V, how did he do all that kind of stuff? He started out with Wine Library TV. He started out basically drinking wine. Yeah. And, uh, making a little you know, video blog about yeah. it. The production quality wasn't very good, mm. but he shipped and he was consistent and he kept doing it. And so a lot of people starting out now, they get paralyzed because their stuff is not as good as someone else's. Exactly. You know? And I look at what we're doing here and still think that it's not as good as what other people are doing, but it's so much better than what I was doing three years ago, mm. partially because you're involved. Yeah. 
you know. 100%. Mm. Mm. So comparing yourself to others, that's what pisses me off. There we go. Yeah. End of red go. lights. It's yeah. good, isn't it? The yeah. way the light comes on, Perfect. it's good, isn't it? Yeah, thumbs up from the director over here. Yeah. That's good. Ooh. That's good. Uh, cool. So <coughs> there's been a couple of questions, and I'm, I'm very happy to say that this one actually didn't come from our community, but let's you know, get some help get some people unstuck. Let's get unstuck. When I say I'm happy this didn't come from the community, I don't mean I'm sick of hearing from you guys, but I am happy that this one actually came from YouTube. It's good that it's, it's like usually within the WP Elevation community, which is of course the, the private membership as part of WP Elevation, um, there's always a lot of great questions in there and a lot of great content. But this question this week comes from Auntie Thomas from one of our YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna have a click in to see which one. It's the, oh, the toot that I did on WordPress migration, uh, local to staging. Uh, check it out on YouTube. Uh, and the question is from Auntie Thomas. Da, da, da. He says, and I'm, it's quite a long one, so I'm just going to paraphrase this one. Uh, I see a disconnection. No, you were going to say oh, something? Oh, come on. No, no, no. no? <laughs> Please, read the entire thing. No, no. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah. It's a good way to get people to tune out, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. This is a long one. So, and the. Pete's gone to the bar. Um, I kind of see a disconnection when moving the design process into the WordPress environment. So, you know, you do the research, you create the wireframes, you do all that stuff. But how do you actually turn it into a finished design? How do you actually go from the, the design and then you've got like a theme and then you've got to customize that. You've got to actually turn that into the design here. Like how do you actually, there's a big disconnect about how you do that. And my thoughts on that, unless I've like misunderstood the question here, Andy, um, it's really about just hiring a developer. If you do need to customize something, you need someone who understands the theme framework you're using, can understand UX, can understand how to build this properly, how to turn the vision, the design into a coded functional reality. And that requires having a, a developer. Um, the other thing that I just want to mention here, and this is something that I've been saying for, and it, yes, if you do go and do the research and stalk me online, you'll find out that I have been saying this for over five years, is that if you are designing websites in Photoshop, you are a goose because you are actually designing a drawing of a website, not an actual website. What's that other so, word? Nink a nincompoop. <laughs> That's right. We were wondering if anyone outside of Australia knows what a nincompoop is. Mm. If you're designing websites yeah, you in Photoshop... Yep, you reckon they do. Yep. I thought it was an Australian colloquialism, nincompoop. No, perhaps not. Something we inherited from the Brits, maybe. Looney Tunes. From Looney Tunes. Oh. Stop it. Who was that voice in the background? <laughs> I'm hearing voices. From Looney Tunes, nincompoop. There you go, I didn't really? know that. Google uh, nincompoop from Looney Tunes. Um, if you're designing websites in Photoshop, you're a nincompoop. There you go. You should be designing websites, I don't know, here's a radical idea, in the browser, where they live, where they're actually going to end up. So if yeah. we are designing in Photoshop, should we stop? So if you go, well, Troy yes. said don't. don't. So what do, I, so what do we do? So here's a couple of things. Here's two reasons why you should stop designing in Photoshop. One, you won't have to then take the Photoshop file and get it cut up into an HTML, CSS, WordPress theme. So that just removes that from the process, saves you money and speeds up the development process. So there's a thing. Two, when you show your client a picture of a website in Photoshop, which is what it is, and then show them the final thing in the browser, there will always be discrepancies. The rendering of fonts is the obvious one and line height and letter spacing. And there will always be a disconnect in their expectations. So to manage your client's expectations, speed up your development process and run a more profitable business, stop designing websites in Photoshop and start designing them in the browser. Um, and so if you've built the wireframe, find a good UX designer to design a nice user experience with nice interface elements in the browser. Use a page builder and design it in the freaking browser. Save a few steps, wouldn't it? Correct. Mm, I mean, I designing, like designing something in the browser with something like Elementor or Oxygen or Beaver mm. Builder is the same as designing in, in Photoshop. It's just a different set of tools. Just something new to learn. Yeah, yeah. It's just a different toolbar, di different palette of tools on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. Anti, I'm going to find you and I'm going to link you to this so that you can see this one. Hopefully you're watching, actually. I don't hmm. suppose he's on there. Not sure. Seen. Don't know. No idea. Cool. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's uh, somehow segue into the, <laughs> the main topic this week. Oh, the gold nugget. Time to dig into the gold nugget. Mm, really need to do some... <laughs> rehearsals on those segues, don't no, that we? Nailed it. <clears throat> that one was absolutely the nailed it. The transitions are a bit <coughs> rough. It's perfect. Uh, put that in the oh, Here in we the go. Nincompoop. <laughs> Sorry. My mate RO has said here, Nincompoop, who's in the building. Late 17th century, perhaps from the given name Nicholas or from Nicodemus by association with the 
Pharisee of this name mm -hmm. and his naive questioning of Christ compare with the French Nicodame Simpleton. How are the pronunciations there? Pretty good? Not uh, bad? The, yeah, the good. French, I, I would okay. say, could do with some improvements, Simpleton. but overall it wasn't bad. There you go. Nincompoop. Mm. So that's the gold nugget. No. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, all right. So an article came out written by Troy Dean himself oh. on, uh, well, maybe not, mm. uh, on the WP Elevation website about winning more business using anti-follow-up. Mm. So just before we dive into a couple of resources and tools and templates, as you know, I like to share on the show, I just want to get a little, little bit of backstory from, from Troy. Sure. Um, what, what is anti-follow-up? So anti-follow-up, uh, by the way, I didn't write this. It was ghostwritten by Stephen King, who is actually my ghostwriter these mm. days. Famous novelist you may have heard of. Yeah. Um, anti-follow-up is um, my way of doing sales without being a douche. <clears throat> the truth is I'm far too fragile to do any sales because <laughs> if I get rejected, I just go and hurtle Crumble. myself off a bridge. Yep. <laughs> so, which is not fun for anyone. So I like With your to, $10 haircut. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? No, no, what I'm you bringing mean? it back. I'm bringing it back to the sales time. We get our haircut thing. at the same barber, dude. And you're telling me I've got a ten dollar haircut. I'm bringing it back to the sales time. Remember, you're knocking haircut. on the Thank thing. Thank you very much, my friends. Oh, um, <clears throat> so anyway, back on track. Um, the anti follow-up is a way of keeping in touch with your clients and following them up without being douchey or needy, right. because the it's kind of like dating, right? Like when you go out on the first date with someone. You should not call them up the next day and say, oh, hi, Mary. Just wondering how last night was. Um, how was the movie I picked? Was the restaurant good? Did I use my cutlery okay? <laughs> Didn't uh, leave any gravy or red wine on my shirt, did I? Of course you're not going to do that because that's a little bit needy and a bit desperate, right? Mm. You want to give yourself a couple of days. You know, he who calls first loses. I mean, we've all counselled our friends through this in the past, right? Don't call her, man. Mm. Don't call her. Just play cool, right? Play mm -hmm. hard again. Mm -hmm. So anti-follow-up is kind of an extension of that. If you've... If you've got a relationship with someone and you've, got, and you've put in a proposal, the worst thing you want to do is pick up the phone and call them and say, oh, I'm just wondering if you got the proposal. Of course they got the proposal. We can see that in our email tracking software, right? Have you read the proposal? Of course they've read the proposal, right? They're now just thinking about it because it's probably a little more expensive than they'd anticipated, yeah? I mean, am I the only one who thinks this? I mean, this is obvious. This is basic banana stuff, right? So you don't want to call them up and say, oh, you know, you got any questions about the proposal? Yeah, I've got a question. Can you do it cheaper? Mm. That's the question they have. So what you want to do is continue to educate them and nurture them and play the anti-follow-up game and let them come to you. Mm. Um, I don't know if I'm kind of no, no, just setting set the scene. No, not at all. Not at all. Perfect. I can't handle rejection. That's why I like to just keep educating them and nurturing mm. them until they come to me and say, oh, well, look, hey, we've got your proposal. This has been, you know, uh, you're, you're clearly the expert at this. Can we work together? And mm. I, at that point, I say, yes, of course you can. And I open the red velvet curtain and I let them into, into the, the clubhouse VIP room. and they're in the VIP room and mm. then happy days, let's dance. Mm, exactly. I never want to go up to someone on the dance floor and say, do you want to dance? Mm. Never going to happen. Because mm. if they say no, I'm yeah. done. You just need to I'm look in as the corner, awesome as you can and then they come crime. to you kind of That's thing. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. I just stand there and be cool, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't even care if I'm desperate. Don't even care. <laughs> don't even so, care. So what, what you were saying before about like, yes, they've read the proposal. I've, I've found in a lot of cases they haven't read the proposal because they're busy. They're doing other things. And by following up with them, and asking if they've read it is, it doesn't give them any value at all. It doesn't help to remind them of why you're most positioned to, mm. um, to, put to, to do this project and deliver success with them. So what about giving them value mm. and just continuously giving them value? Mm. Like <coughs> we've said this many times on, on the show in the past, is like how, how better to show that you're valuable by giving value, right? So if you've got a proposal, I know, it's insane. Um, <laughs> so if you've got a proposal in the works and then you're just giving them, just drip feeding them valuable bits of information. For example, if you've got a proposal about uh, redesigning their website and doing some ongoing SEO. If you were to educate them on your process and uh, some useful resources about SEO, such as like Moz's beginner to mm -hmm. SEO article, which is um, one of my favorites there, uh, that would be useful for them. Something that they can understand and something that they can get value from and something that your competitors and other people who are pitching to them all the time, they're probably not doing that unless they're watching this show. One of, the, one of my favorite emails to send is the, uh, I think there's like a 15 or a 17 point checklist of things that you have to make sure that you check before you launch a website, before right. you go live. And it's nice. like making sure that your favicons are in place and you've got retina versions of your icons and you know, spelling and grammar and all that kind of stuff, making sure that search engine robots is unticked and all that kind of you know, basic stuff yep. that you should have as a checklist. I share that with, with my potential clients and I say, hey, 
regardless of who you end up working with, just make sure these 17 things are ticked off before you launch the website. Yep. At which point they go, hmm, I hope these other clowns that gave me a proposal are thinking about this because they sure as hell haven't mentioned it. That's right. Right. That's just a very simple example of how to do, how to execute something that we're talking about here. Yep, exactly. And follow up. Yep. Mm. So I've got a couple of emails in a template and as part of WP Elevation, we have, we've got quite a lot mm -hmm. of Emails all there together. are anti-follow-ups for new prospects after you've given them a proposal. There are mm -hmm. anti-follow-up sequences for new clients after you've launched the website and you want to get referrals from them. There are anti-follow-up sequences for any sort of part of your business. Mm. So I've just pulled, plucked out three uh, from the WP Elevation Blueprint and one shared by one of our members, Keith Agnew, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and one is following up by saying your process. So after you send the proposal, waiting a couple of days, and then saying, uh, hi, hi, Paul, I thought you might like to see the process we use to launch websites, and then link to your process there. If you've got it on a web page, or if you've created a graphic, or something that just shows that you have a process to, to do websites. You have a way to deliver a result consistent, consistently. Uh, it's a great resource we use here to make sure everything is considered and nothing is missed. Hope you find it useful. It's a little bit of value for them. It also positions you as someone that knows what they're doing, which is important. Another one I've uh, put together in the templates here is uh, Landing Pages 101. Hi, Paul. I found this the other day and just had to share it with you. It sums up everything that makes a perfect landing page on a website and presents it in a beautiful way. And it's a link to the uh, Kiss Metrics article. It was from like 2005, I think, mm -hmm. but it's still amazing. Uh, landing page design infographic. Hope you find it useful. And then I've got another one for SEO, but we'll, we'll provide a link to that. <coughs> that also well. starts off with, hey, Paul. Um, <laughs> now, just in case your client is not named Paul, you should switch out Paul and oh. actually put your client's name in there. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. So just a little <laughs> detail. As many people love, is how do we how do we automate this? Is one one of the main things, and I would like to answer that by saying, don't straight yeah, away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Don't automate things unless they're working, right? Correct. Like there's just we need to solve a problem before it exists for some reason. Uh, just send it to your clients. Just mm. give yourself a reminder. Whatever you need to do, whatever it needs to be. After breakfast every morning, I don't know. Whatever you need to do, set yourself a habit and just send it and just see what happens. The best way to do this kind of semi-automated is to use something like Boomerang for Gmail, mm. which basically sets you reminders and it, it basically, you, you can schedule it and you say, send this tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, or you can actually schedule it to drop things back in your inbox to yep. remind you. Yeah. So, so that's if it's kind 4 a.m. and you're thinking, I want to follow up with the client, you can yeah, use yeah. Boomerang to schedule right. the anti-follow-up. Because <clears throat> that's another little positioning thing, right? I never email clients after work hours, because mm. I, I don't want them to have that expectation that I'm going to answer the phone or a text message or yeah. email on the weekends or after hours. So if I'm working at 10 o'clock at night, I'm about to send an email to a client, I schedule it for 8 a.m. the next morning. Yeah, perfect. Mm. Good, very good. So Anything else? <laughs> yeah. Can I go to the bar with Pete now? Yeah. We done? That's it. Well, let's have a look on the old internet machine and see if anyone's <laughs> The old anything. internet machine. Uh, Steve, Steve Little, Little says hello. Sean Delmer gives a thumbs up. Colleen says, uh, anti-follow-up is the best, otherwise you appear needy and desperate. Correct. Ah, um, Sean Nicole And Sean Nicole, uh, hey Sean, how you doing? Also suggests Sketch as a way of designing well, websites. Marvel app, I've heard something about Marvel and Sketch together. I'll definitely mm. be looking at that shiny tool, Sean. Hmm. And Colleen also says nincompoop on a regular basis. Good. I'm not sure in the mirror or to her husband or <laughs> the dog, I'm not sure who she says it to. Just but in the mirror. Just make nincompoop. you feel good every day. Yeah. Just say nincompoop three times. Um, do we have a tool of the week? We, we always do, week? and you oh, might just need to okay. give me a moment. Oh, so, oh. yes, of course we do. Oh, very good. <laughs> so, it's time to have a look at the tool of the week. Get ready for tool of the week. It's him. He's the tool <laughs> yeah. of the week. Ah, but I'm sh I've been waiting to do that for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have the little, the little soundboard. Mm. Uh, so, tool of the week this week is Active Campaign because that's uh -huh. what I use for the anti follow up sequence. Very good. So, what you can do is you can set up the sequence, a sequ sequence of emails to send to your clients. You, I separate them by. Uh, I have a couple of rules. One is uh, make sure that it's in the um, the recipient's time zone. Mm. Uh, it's not a weekend mm -hmm. and. Uh, space them three days apart, mm. and, and that's all I do. And then Perfect. I just put in three emails yep. and uh, put that into Active Campaign. I'll tag the client as anti follow up, and then that sends me an email because I have a team, and they'll tag anti follow up, and I just want to get a notification when people are being tagged. Mm -hmm. So the day before the first email goes out, I'll get notified, and then three emails go out. Perfect. Yep. 
A couple of things I need to add to this because that they just work. Um, uh, sure. You need to make sure that if someone actually accepts the proposal that you go and tag them in your CRM so they don't keep getting the anti-follow-up emails. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to do this on steroids, I, I remember having a, uh, I remember getting emails from a potential client saying, oh, thanks for the video, that was great. And I remember sitting there thinking, what the hell is this person talking about? Yeah. And then I was reminded, I was, oh, they're in an anti-follow-up campaign. That's what, they're getting these automated emails. My automated emails, my anti-follow-up campaign would just go to video blogs that I'd made mm -hmm. where I would basically teach something that I'd learned online. Like you could take the landing page template from Kissmetrics and just teach it in a video, but you're in the video. So by the time I actually walked in to start working with this client, I'd already submitted a proposal. Uh, the CEO then called me back and he said, yep, yeah, we've got approval from the board. I just want to have a meeting and sign all this off. By the time I walked in his office, when I walked in, this guy literally did a double take and kind of stepped backwards because he said, I feel like I know you so well. I feel like you're a bit of a celebrity because I've been watching your videos. And I can't believe you're now here in my office. Well, and I remember feeling like this is exactly where you want your clients to be. Yep. You want them to see you as the authority celebrity mm. because they never once argued on price or process. They trusted me to do a great job. They, they had a great budget, they paid the fee, there was no argument there, and it was a beautiful, elegant execution, if I do say so myself. Mm. So there you go. <clears throat> and the other thing is those, those videos that you make that you include in anti-follow-up sequence can just be video blogs that you can publish on your website, which is evergreen content that will continue to bring in leads time and time again. Mm. So there you go. Yeah. Got tons of value there. Yeah. <laughs> Dropping belly bombs just here. Throwing them at you. <laughs> Yeah, I think video, it's definitely underutilized. Like everyone's afraid of like how they look on video. Wait, mm. did you know that you look the same on video as you do in real life? Did you know that? Who, me or just people in just general? Just people in general. Right, really? Yeah. Which is interesting that people are afraid of being on video. I actually reckon I look, you look better like that on all video the time. than in real life. Which yeah, well, is why I you spend know, most of my life with a camera in front of me. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, these cameras do a pretty good there, job. So I can I look say. at myself. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> just... <laughs> There's just okay. a picture next and to the lens. That's right. yeah. Mirrors and cameras everywhere. Yeah. It's like the Troy show. show. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Hey, um, I hope you've had as much fun as Richard has watching. Uh, we've definitely had some fun doing this. I'm sorry about the... How are the robot noises? Are they still there? Still there? Yeah? You think it's my laptop? Yeah, really? right. Well, I'll close the laptop. Here we go. Just get rid of the laptop. Here we go. Laptop gone. No more laptop. How's the sound? It's interfering like a phone, is it? Yeah, I don't know. Mm. All right. Oh, well. Come to the laptop. <laughs> well, uh, sorry about the robots. Uh, sorry about the frequency um, interference. We hope you've enjoyed this as much as we have. Uh, Simon and I are off for a couple of weeks. We are flying to Los Angeles to get drunk in West Hollywood with Pete Perry. And then we're going down to San Diego to run our week-long mastermind. Cannot wait to meet uh, you guys who have bought tickets to that. Uh, we're there all of next week. So are we doing... Are we doing this next week? Are we going to guest gonna, in? We're we? going to guest right. in. We're going to guest yeah, yeah. in. So Ray and Jin will be in the hot seats for the next couple of weeks. We're going to guest in from San Diego next week. The week after, I think we're both in the on planes flying, so we won't be able to guest in. The week after that, we'll be. I'll be back in the hot seat. He'll be spooning a polar bear in Canada somewhere. Let's so, hope so. Uh, we'll try and get him to guest in. I hope I'm, I'm the big spoon that. for that Can one. Can you take a photo? Not too close, Not too but close. yeah, yeah. I'll take a photo. Oh, definitely. I'll definitely take a photo. Uh, feel free to please share this and, uh, <coughs> and like it and share it with your friends on Facebook and leave us a comment. Tell us what you want to learn next. And uh, if you miss the live show, then you can watch the recording on YouTube at wpelevation.com slash YouTube. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, all that kind of stuff that you need to do over there. And of course, if you go to wpelevation.com slash Snapchat, you'll get a 404 page <laughs> because we don't like Snapchat and we don't use it. Perfect. All good. We're done. Contractual obligations finished. Sounds good. Excellent. Look forward to seeing you very soon again. Uh, I am Troy Dean. I'm Simon Kelly. And remember, knowledge is power. And silence is golden.